So if you've been keeping up with the vlogs, you know that I recently went on a massive trip across Southern Africa with G Adventures. And in today's video, I wanted to review my experience and share a little bit more in detail what I personally thought it was like traveling with them and particularly on a 18 to 30 something tour so that you guys can have a little bit more of a clear perspective if you want to book with them what the experiences were like. I will make sure to have some timestamps in the bottom so you guys can follow along and skip to the part that is most relevant to you guys. But without further ado, let's get into it. If you wanna book a trip with G Adventures, there's basically two ways you can book a trip like this. Either you can go directly through their website and book the trip yourself, or you can go through a booking agent, which is what I personally did. So I ended up going with this girl, her name's Autumn, she's from Canada, and I booked through her because she was recommended by me by another friend, and I just decided that for me that was the easiest way to go because she could help me with things like flights, additional questions I had and everything like that, that you just don't have the same experience chatting with the chat box of G Adventures on their website. So for me personally, that was the way to go. I'll make sure to leave her name, her Instagram handle in the description so you guys can check it out. And I just really like that she was there throughout multiple parts of the process. Now I've never booked myself, so I don't know how many emails maybe G Adventures would send you if you had booked by yourself. But for me personally, it was just a little bit more of a personal touch. And I just really like supporting these smaller companies as well. So that's why I decided to go through her. Now, if you want to book a trip to Africa, the one thing that will come up first most likely is how much is this thing going to cost me? Now, let me tell you, Africa is not a cheap destination to travel to. This has been proven to me on multiple trips that I've taken across the continent of Africa. It just costs a little bit more money because there's a little bit more hassle involved than if you would say go on a trip yourself to Southeast Asia. There are some things that you cannot handle yourself, some of the drives, some of the park fees, there's just a lot more expensives involved. But that being said, I was happily surprised when I saw the price for this 28 day tour that I did with G Adventures. I was expecting to pay quite a bit more money than what I ended up spending because in total for just the trip, I ended up spending just under 3,000 euros. This is the exact amount that I spent on just the tour itself. Now, this doesn't include any flights. This doesn't include any other kind of expenses, optional activities. This was just the price of the tour, uh, which did include your sleeping facilities, the drive, your CEOs, everything like that. That is just the base price that everybody would have to pay for a trip like this. Now, I personally was able to get this price at a discounted rate because I booked during the Black Friday sale. And I definitely recommend if you're booking with a tour company and especially with G Adventures that you would book during a sale period because for me the trip was 20% off which was definitely a great deal. I know G Adventures always has a New Year sale which is in January and then they also have last minute sales all the time which you can check out on their website as well. But yeah, I recommend that you book a trip that is currently on sale because it just ends up being so much cheaper than the full price and they have these sales going on multiple times a year. So I definitely recommend waiting a little bit longer or booking a little bit earlier in advance on one of these sale period days. If you want to know how much I spent in total on this trip, make sure to subscribe to my channel because one of the next videos on my channel is going to be a full budget breakdown of my month in Africa. So make sure to subscribe so you can see that one coming. Now, one of the reasons I booked this tour in particular was because I'd already gone on a safari heavy trip before with a different travel company and I did that with my grandma. So it was like a Dutch company that I went with and we went to Tanzania. So everything we did on that trip was heavily focused on just just safari drives and I really enjoyed that experience but I wanted to see a different side of Africa as well on my next trip that I was doing and so that's why I decided to actually book this trip because I have found that in general I would say this trip was a little bit more combined and you did a lot more than just safaris which I really liked because that was kind of the one thing I lacked in my previous tour that I did in Tanzania so I was really happy with the itinerary what we did this is a little picture of the kind of route that we did. So as you can see, we went from South Africa, then we went to Namibia where we did a lot of exploring in the desert. And then it wasn't until Itosha, which was around day 10 or 11, when we did our first safari. We then went down to Windhoek and from Windhoek we crossed over to Botswana and that is where we did the Okavanga Delta but also went to Mount and some other cities. And then we ended up in Chobe, which was another safari place. 
and then we popped over to Zimbabwe which is where we went to Victoria Falls and then went all the way down to Motopos in Zimbabwe before crossing back over to South Africa where we went to some hot springs in Chipitse before going back to Kruger. So like I was saying this trip was definitely a bigger variety of activities. We didn't just do safaris, we did a lot of other things. So yeah I booked this trip particularly for the different experiences that you we were having. Now I would say that if you did this trip without any optional activities you would still have a good trip but there's definitely some optional activities that I recommend everybody to book just because otherwise you will be spending quite some days just chilling at campsites and if that's kind of your deal like some nights I definitely needed that and I did but some nights you were just out doing activities all the time so it kind of varies a little bit but I would highly recommend looking into the optional activities that they have which will increase the price of your trip a little bit, but they are so worth it. For me personally, in the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical on how many of these optional activities I would need. Wouldn't it be too jam-packed? Like, how much is already included? Like, what are the alternatives? So I was a little cautious when I was booking optional activities, and I only ended up pre-booking two of them. I booked the Chobi Safari, which was, what, three hours long, and I also booked the helicopter ride in Victoria Falls because I just knew that those were two things that I wanted to do in advance. I was most excited about Chobe and also Victoria Falls just seemed so cool to experience from the sky. So that's why I booked the helicopter ride as well. But I wish I would have booked just a few activities extra because in general they are slightly cheaper when you book them in advance. Now it's definitely still possible to add additional activities whilst you're on your trip. The CEO would usually ask the day or two days before um, like hey these are the optional activities that are coming up, who of you have already pre-booked them and is there still people that would like to book them and then they would reserve everything for you and take care of everything and then you would just pay while you were there. Some of my personal favorite activities that I ended up booking afterwards on this trip were the wine tasting in South Africa, also the quad biking in the Namibian desert, we also ended up doing um, the Okavanga Delta flight which was another flight that we did above the Delta as well as the Chobe Sunset River cruise. So yeah those were kind of my favorite activities that I ended up booking on the trip that if you want to do this similar trip I would recommend booking in advance. One of the reasons I was doubtful of booking these activities in advance was the like how much would you be able to do if you weren't doing these activities but also just I was a little bit afraid that maybe some people wouldn't be booking these activities and I would be the only one while everybody else gets to go out and enjoy themselves together but this was definitely not the case. I ended up being quite surprised at how many people actually booked a lot of these optional activities. Whenever I wasn't feeling to do one of the activities I would say maybe four to five people out of the group of 22 stayed back and didn't do an activity but everybody else would end up doing the activities. So yeah it's just something if you can do it I would definitely recommend to do some of the optional activities and don't be afraid that there won't be anybody else joining because I promise you there will be someone. Now if you're going on a 18 to 30 something tour then you will be staying in uh, tents so this is definitely something that can be a little bit scary in advance. I have made a few videos about uh, what I wish I packed and what I wish I brought and everything like that. I will link that up here as well so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed camping most of the nights and we were sleeping in tents for two people and if you wanted you could upgrade to a single tent but for me personally it was fine to share the tent with another person. You could decide who you were sharing a tent with and that was kind of your tent buddy for the whole trip but there were definitely some nights that I just couldn't do the camping and wanted to upgrade and it was really nice that in I would say 80 to 90 percent of the facilities that we stayed at there was the option to upgrade to a room or a fixed tent that had like an actual bed in there so if you want to do that you can also do that as well. Uh, there were definitely very nice campsites and so it was definitely not needed to upgrade all the nights but for me sometimes I was just not feeling the best and I just wanted to have a little bit more space and I was really happy that there was the opportunity to upgrade whenever I wanted to. The toilets and the bathrooms were always super clean. There are a few campsites where you are doing a little bit more of off-grid camping where there isn't uh, running water available but this is something that the CEOs prepare you for well in advance so don't be afraid of that. Um, they will take care of everything like that. There was always a drop toilet then available for us and then yeah there was just one night where we couldn't shower but that was okay because we knew this in advance. 
but other than that the facilities were always super super nice super clean and I would stay in them 1,000 times over again. And as for the vehicle that we were driving in, we were driving in this beautiful purple Lando, which was equipped with chargers, USB ports at every single seat, and you also had a window that you could open wherever you were sitting on the Lando. Now I do have to say that in Africa in particular, there is no Wi-Fi on the Landos. I know that this is something that is sometimes miscommunicated with G-Adventures, but you're being off-grid without service so many times during these longer drives that is just not possible to provide any hotspot or anything um, so that is just something that yeah don't count on having Wi-Fi the whole time of your trip make sure to pre-download some Netflix bring a Kindle or bring a book and have some entertainment for on the road but the Landos were comfortable seated and yeah I can just really recommend the facilities in general they were always super clean super nice and I really enjoyed being on them and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is that the one thing that makes or breaks your trip is your CEO. Now, I was very lucky with the CEO that I had for a majority of our trip. He was super nice and so was our driver. And they really, really enjoyed doing these kind of tours. And that is something that I think is really special. And yeah, this is just something that G Avengers does so well when they train their employees to be as passionate about the job as these people are. It was just really lovely. Now. We did end up switching to different tour guides for the last seven days because we were on a combined tour and we ended up combining with another tour and we switched guides and those guides were still very lovely but I have to say my personal favorites were our first guides um, just because we had built up such a bond with them and also their passion was just a little bit more present but nevertheless the other guides were still very very good and we still had a great time with them everything was organized everything was structured but yeah, there's definitely a little bit of a difference in, with your CEO. So make sure to befriend them on the first days and be nice to your CEO so that you can have a great experience with them as well. And I think that will make a world of a difference. My general consensus with traveling with G Adventures is that I would highly recommend going with them to destinations that are maybe not as easily traveled to. I'm not sure if I would book them to go, for example, to Mexico or Southeast Asia which are tours that I think you can do by yourself as well. But for a trip that goes to like Africa or say for example the Middle East, I think booking a group tour with a company that has a lot of experience in these regions and is as well structured and organized as G Adventures is a good solution. They are a little bit expensive, but that is just a general thing with group tours. They will always be a little bit more expensive than if you would do a tour yourself. But because these places aren't as easily traveled to as say like Europe of Southeast Asia, or Mexico or something um, I do think it's worth it to pay that little bit extra to have the safety and all the worries taken care of we went over like four or five different land borders and they were always there to support you with this and just the hassle of having to figure out these drives and everything like that it was just a lot easier to go through a tour company we had some people on the tour with us that had done self drives before uh, in the same area and they just said that it was definitely a little bit easier when you were traveling in the group. So yeah, I definitely recommend traveling with them if you're going to Africa. Make sure to leave me a comment down below if you've already decided which tour you're booking with G Adventures. I'll make sure to leave my tour as well so you guys can check that one out. And if you want to see a little bit more of the day-to-day -day of what it was like traveling to Africa, you can watch this playlist that has all the vlogs in it. And subscribe if you want to see my budget breakdown to see how much I exactly spent on the whole month traveling Africa. Video will be coming out soon, so I'll link it here once it's live. And I will see you guys in the next video.